Hello, this is the Mifior, the Montfagnor, however you want to call me. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be, uh, reading Past Sins, uh, My Little Pony Past Sins fanfic. And, yeah, it just felt like it, so. Let's dive in. Oh, one more note. Uh, I'm going to be trying this as live as I can, so yeah. Might have random bangs or whatnot or mistakes or blah blah blah. But yeah. Okay. On to passions. Prelude. Resurrection. Well, guess I should go into what the story's generally about. Uh, generally, from what I read, it's about, like, this, uh, cult that was trying to bring back, uh, Nightmare Moon, and their spell failed, bring back something similar, but it wasn't really evil. It was just like a good reincarnation, kind of. So, uh, yeah, they are generally trying to, well, the cult got defeated, yada, 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 and the pony's trying to fit in, is the basic snare of it from what I got. Prelude. Resurrection. Mist. Dim candlelight. A single unicorn with his head bent down, eyes shut. Oh. Miss Dim Candlelight, a single unicorn, sat with his head bent down, eyes shut. He sat alone at the edge of a still pond, his reflection dancing in the water. The pond was nestled deep within the ever-free forest. The darkened trees and snarled branches surrounding all sides like silent sentinels. While most of Equestria had just shifted into spring, Everfree was still gripped by clean bits of winter. Snow covered the ground, and there was a lingering chill in the air. The unicorn's hot breath left puffs of steam to curl and rise for a few seconds before disappearing into the night. For a long while, the unicorn had sat in the utter silence on the edge of the pond, with only a few nearby candles for company. The light from the tiny flickering flames fell upon his black coat, though it wasn't his natural color. No, his whole body, man included, had been dyed the deepest black possible. Even his cutie mark had been covered by the dyes, his flank appearing utterly blank. Sorry, was just getting a drink. I might do that quite often. Anyways, back to the story. Only the quiet sounds of the forest were audible. The creaking of the trees and shifting of the pond water. It was a scene of tranquility. The unicorn needed to prepare for the task of the evening. Yet, as he took in another deep breath and released it, hoofsteps began to echo across the trees. <sighs> Nexus, we're ready when you are, the black unicorn. Spell Nexus took in another breath, turquoise eyes opening as he turned to the to look at the pony who had approached him from behind. I will be along shortly. The pony who had interrupted nodded, disappearing back into the forest. After waiting for the hoof steps to fade into silence, Nexus led his horn. As his magic flowed, he reached to his side with the arcane energy, levitating a number of items into the air. <sighs> Our queen, guide me this night. Nexus said as he turned his gaze skyward. 
For it is beneath this full moon that our efforts come to fruition. Nexus spoke the words slowly, his voice carrying the tone of a pony well practiced in preaching, whose words could inspire the loyalty of his brothers and sisters, a voice that had drawn great minds and strong bodies to the cause, though at the moment he was speaking only to himself. The black-dyed unicorn lowered his head and touched a hoof to his chest as he said, Let me be merely a vessel for your will and strength until the deed is done. The levitating items drew close to him, a cape of midnight blue with white stars all across its surface, chest place comprised of grayish-purple metal with a turquoise crescent moon set in its center. Horseshoes to match the chest piece, and armored plate for the back of his neck. Let me bear your mane, Nexus spoke, as he drew the cape over his back. Both powerful and beautiful, depiction of the endless sky. Let me stand in uniform, he continued, as the armor began to secure itself to his body, in the armor that pays tribute to your image and greatness. Let me be your agent this night, for it is you I serve above all others. The final piece of armor levitated towards Nexus, a helmet made of the same metal as the chest piece. The unicorn guided the helm carefully, bringing it down across his horn as it fit snugly onto his head. <sighs> May your power... <clears throat> May your power be with me, for tonight you shall breathe and taste the cool night air for yourself. Nexus spoke as he rose to his hoofs. You shall look upon the world with eyes of your own, and no longer be forced to share a body with a weak foal as you have in the past. Tonight you shall be your own mare, never again to be threatened by the elements of harmony. Nexus stood, looking at his reflection in the pond. He now appeared the ultimate doppelganger of his mistress, taking on the visage of an eager acolyte, ready to receive her power and knowledge. Through the efforts of him and his group, they would see their queen rise again, yet it was only he that was allowed to look so much like the queen to lead the spell that was about to be cast. It was his place of honor. One no pony would steal from him. Tonight, Nightmare Moon, your followers shall grant you a life of your own, and the tyrants of Sun and Moon shall fall. Mentally prepared, Nexus turned and began to walk into the forest, following the trail that connected the pond to another part of the Everfree, another clearing which came into view quickly and was occupied by several unicorns Pegasi and Earth Ponies, moving about the space as they constantly checked their work. The ground had been cleared of snow, though few piles were left dotted about the space. On both the exposed ground and on the piles of snow, there were wooden bowls filled with oil soaked powders. Paint had been used upon the ground to draw arcane lines of power, and in the air above, cloaked Pegasi worked on gathering clouds pushing them together to hide the clear to hide the clearing from prying skybound eyes. All the ponies Nexus saw or the black coat all the ponies Nexus saw wore the black cloak of the order, except for three who stood giving orders, a pair of pegsi and an earth pony. They, like Nexus, wore the honored armor, though he alone wore the flowing starfield cape and the helmet, vestments only he had the honor of wearing. How close? How close are we, Nightwind? Nexus asked as he approached the trio. Cloud cover is almost complete. Pegasi only need a few minutes to get their bowls. The dark purple Pegasi 
Pegasus answered, staring back at Nexus with turquoise, with her turquoise eyes. Sign of the Order. Through the work of a spell, Nexus blessed each of the children of Nightmare. It was a blessing that carried enlightenment along with special eyes, which bore their majesty's regal turquoise cover. Good, Nexus said, before turning to the Earth Pony. Stonewall, do you have the items? They have not left my sight since our departure from Cantalot, Nexus, the Earth Pony replied, motioning to the bowl that was currently resting on his back. And Greygale, is our special guest awake? <laughs> oh yeah, she just woke up, the Grey Pegasus of the trio answered, talking far more casually. <laughs> and boy, she's scared. That's because you told her Stonewall would snap off her horn if she tried to escape. Nightwind snipped. Hey! <laughs> hey, kept her from trying anything, Grey Gale defended. She couldn't try anything even if she wanted to. She got an anti-magic brace on her neck. You have done well, Nexus spoke, stopping the argument before it could go any further. But now, we must all take our places. Stonewall, take the sacred items to the center of the ritual. Greygale, Nightwind, prepare your torches and head to the sky. The three nodded, going to their assigned tasks. While Nexus turned his attention to one side of the clearing, there, lying on the ground, was a pony, hogtied with ropes and a cloth bag over her head. Treading carefully, Nexus moved between the wooden bowls and approached the hogtied pony. When he was a few steps away, the cult leader used his magic to remove the bag. The unicorn captive was now fully visible, her violet coat dirty in a few places from the fact she was lying on the ground. Her darker purple mane was a mess as she looked up at Nexus in fear, undoubtedly noticing the resemblance the unicorn had with a certain fallen princess. I'm so happy you were able to join us this evening, Miss Sparkle, Nexus whispered as he looked down at the purple pony. Who are you? What are you going to do to me? Twilight asked in a panic squeak. Well, that wasn't much of a panic squeak. Who are you? What are you going to do to me? Twilight asked in a panic squeak. That's closer, but yeah, I might have trouble with her voice. Just barely managing to find her voice as she struggled at the ropes around her legs. She had likely tried to use her magic to escape, but she was not just bound physically. A metal brace occurred around the unicorn's neck kept her from making use of her magic. Inquisitive, though I should expect no less from Celestia's star pupil, Nexus replied, his horn glowing as he picked Twilight off the ground. With the unicorn floating in his magic, Nexus walked back towards the center of the clearing. There, the earth pony Stonewall had set up a metal pedestal upon which he had placed the wooden bowl from his back. Sorry. What we have planned for you, Twilight Sparkle, is very simple. As to who we are, well, consider us simply the loyal servants of Equestria's true queen, her regal majesty, Nightmare Moon. Are you crazy? Twilight asked, twisting a bit as she carried, was carried upside down by Nexus's magic. Nightmare Moon is gone. How can you serve some pony who is gone? It is much easier than you think, Miss Sparkle. I will not, however, spoil the surprise. For the moment, all you need to know is that your contribution is appreciated. 
Nexus replied as he placed the bag back over Twilight's head, securing it tightly and placing a sound dampening spell across the fabric. The mare continued to protest. <laughs> Despite the fact her words were muffled by the spell-infused bag. <laughs> Leaving Twilight floating in the air, Nexus walked over to the metal pedestal. He examined the contents of the wooden bowl set upon the tall, narrow metal table, eyes glinting in anticipation. Inside the bowl were curled shreds of what looked like paper, but they were a purple color and one of the pieces had a big turquoise crescent moon on its surface. He then turned his attention to a dagger resting beside the bowl. Picking it up with his magic, the stallion then looked back at Twilight, who continued to twist, flail, and shout muffled protests. <sighs> Drew close to Twilight, and after lowering her a little closer to the ground, Nexus proceeded to give the mare a swift kick to the stomach. Well, rather, in the stomach, but who cares? Two in whatever. The kick quickly made Twilight stop flailing. The unicorn hang limply in Nexus's magic as she tried to catch the breath that had been knocked out of her lungs. In the moment, Twilight hung motionlessly. Nexus drew the dagger's blade across part of Twilight's leg, leaving a very shallow wound. It was no worse than a paper cut, but brought, but brought muffled screams of panic from the unicorn, as if he had done far worse. The wound... I need a drink. The wound... <clears throat> the wound began to bleed gently, a few drops of blood weeping out. Nexus set the dagger against the wound, gathering several drops of blood on the blade before placing it into the wooden bowl with Nightmare Moon's remains. Yes, steal the life from the blood of the bearer of the element of magic. Let it give you strength, so that you may shed the rest of her blood with your own hooves, Nexus whispered, as he levitated Twilight back to the edge of the clearing and dropped her unceremoniously at the base of a tree before approaching the metal pedestal. Slowly, Nexus drew in a breath, releasing it while watching the puff of steam escape into the night air. Then, with one final deep breath, the unicorn leader looked out across the rest of the children of Nightmare, his voice echoing across the trees as he preached to his feather fellows. Brothers and sisters, for months we have toiled in secrecy. We worked behind the backs of the guards and tyrant princess, putting our own safety at risk. Personal fortunes have been spent along with many hours to bring us to this point, but now we are ready. The spell is prepared. Tonight, we, the children of Nightmare, shall see our queen given life, blood, and form of her own. Once, she and Luna were one and the same, but the elements of harmony could not destroy what our queen was. No, that power could only peel her away from the weak full Luna could only trap her essence in these precious shreds. It was a horrible fate, but it is because of the element Harmony's inability to destroy our queen that we can stand here tonight. For tonight, the spell will give the essence of our queen life of its own. Never again shall she be shackled to the meek Princess Luna, and with our aid, she will come to rule all of Equestria within a year of her tragic defeat. Now lend your magic to the spell, for the time of our victory is at hoof. Nexus called out, rearing back triumphantly before slamming his forehooves into the ground. Let Nightmare be... 
Let Nightmare Moon be born anew. The cult members quickly went about their work. The unicorns formed a circle around the clearing, their horns glowing as the lines of paint they had drawn on the forest floor came to life with a blue incandescence. Stonewall, one of the few earth ponies, walked around the circle and with a torch lit the bowls filled with oil-soaked powders, which burned with an eerie blue flame. As the fires grew, the air in the clearing became so thick with magic it was almost tangible. Above the roach, ugh. above the ritual, the cloaked pegasi cult members also held bowls of burning powder with torches of their own. The armor grade gale and nightshade flew round to light the bowls, kept aloft above the clearing. When all the bowls were lit, Nexus used his magic to take the fire from one, gently holding it in the air and keeping the flickering flames alive, brought the fire over the bowl containing the shreds of Nightmare Moon and the bloody dagger, and then dropped the flame inside. The contents burst into flame almost instantly. Wow, fire. Nexus quickly retreating to the edge of the circle to join his fellow unicorns. There, they all began to twist and form the magic in the air, working like potters with clay. They shaped the free magic, molded it, and began to force it down into the bowl that contained the shreds of Nightmare Moon. After a few moments, Nexus saw what he had hoped for. The blood-soaked dagger started to float above the fire. The blood was drawn up from the dagger by the spell and formed into a single crimson spe Ugh. Crimson? Need a drink for this one. Jeez. Into a single crimson sphere before the dagger itself was launched away, polished metal surface sinking deep into a nearby tree. Black smoke billowed from the central bowl, shreds of nightmare moon starting to burn. Smoke began to form and swirl above, well, around the large drop of blood. That seemed weird, but okay. Fires from the wind bowls were drawn in, swirling and orbiting the spell's focal point like water in a whirlpool. The drop of blood became encased in a black sphere, and that black sphere began to slowly grow, it drew in the fire and smoke and everything. It grew larger with each passing moment. Yes, it is working, my brothers and sisters. She is beginning to take Shape, our queen shall soon be Krakroom, or something like that. Probably like thunder, or a big bang, like boom, 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 or something like that. But yes, Krakroom is an interesting sound effect. The cult ponies jumped, probably a foot in the air, when a single bolt of lightning, told you, lightning, well, the sound is slender, but whatever, raced down from the sky and struck the very center of the spell, sundering the metal podium and wrapping the blood, wrapping the drop of blood, the shreds of nightmare moon, and the wooden bowl in crimson flames. Uh, didn't it mention a crimson flame beforehand? Whatever. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Eyes turned upwards to the source of the lightning. The cloud cover the cult's pegasi had carefully placed was blown back as a full battalion of royal guards flew down from the sky. Freeze! You are all under arrest! Several of the guards shouted as dozens of other gold 
armored pegasi landed in the central of the clearing. Still not a single pony froze. The cultists instead charging the guards in an all-out assault. Nexus stood flabbergasted watching as the center of the spell and the precious shreds of Nightmare Moon were destroyed, all their plans decimated by a single surge of magical lightning, lightning that could only have come from one source. Turning his eyes skyward, Nexus glared at the next figure float down through the hole in the clouds. With a single flash of her horn, the figure brushed away the rest of the cloud cover, like froth from a cup of hot cocoa. Celestia, Nexus forced out through gritted teeth. Maybe it was more of Celestia, but yeah. His turquoise eyes locked on the sun, Princess, as she flowed down amidst the fighting, casting back any pony that dared attack her with barely a flick of her horn. Inside him, a hatred billowed. Every fiber of Nexus's being wanted him to attack, to smite down the Sun Princess for daring to interrupt the ritual. But he knew better. Right, so that's Nexus that's about to talk. Don't think. Well, don't think. Not quite right. Hold on, two clicks. Uh, don't think. Way too loud for shout out. Ah, quiet. Don't think you've won, Sun Tyrant. You have merely delayed me at best. Nexus hissed. Oh, it was a hiss. Don't think you won today, Sun Tyrant. You have merely delayed me at best. That's more hissy. His own horn starting to glow. Grey Gale, Nightwind, Stonewall, and a number of cultists gathered near Nexus as magic flowed from the unicorn's horn. The group then seemed to disappear into thin air through a number of hoofprints took shape in the soft ground as the now invisible cultists fled into the Everfree Forest. Hmm. Invisible cultists. Okay, well, there's then dashes, or, well, rather, equal sign. Which means that this section of this part is over. Might split here, and have another video, or whatnot, or... Might just continue on for a little while longer, and just pick up where I left off. Have you apprehended all involved? The Sun Princess asked, her eyes locked on the guard that stood before her. Celestia currently sat in the Ponyville library. After rescuing Twilight, Princess has Princess had taken her student home and sent her straight to bed. Twilight resisted a bit, but after going through such a stressful situation, it didn't take much to get the unicorn to fall asleep. Celestia had turned the library into a base of operations, keeping the guard of her student personally, while having her guards bring their reports to her. We have captured a great number of those involved, but we believe some were able to escape by using magic to disguise themselves. Those invisible ponies. <laughs> uh, well, cultists, rather. <laughs> the guard reported, had bowed respectfully to the outcorn. We followed their tracks, but they eventually ended, as if they realized their mistake and corrected it before we could catch them. Still, we are continuing to search the force with the aid of the zebra. That reported your student's pony napping. Yes. Sakura, please make sure that she is properly thanked for all she has done this evening. Also, please extend to her an invitation to the palace so that 
she may join Luna and I for dinner on an evening of her choosing. Of course, the guard answered as he raised his head. Though, if I may ask, what were these ponies trying to do? I do not know, Celestia admitted. All we were able to get from the information we gathered prior to this night was that something was going to happen, and that Twilight in her had her head covered by a thick sack for most of her pony napping. She doesn't know enough for us to ascertain this group's purpose. What about the spell? The spell is not something I recognized. If it is from a book or ancient scroll, then I have not read of it, but it could just as easily be a new spell, a ritual crafted for a specific purpose, though that purpose still remains to be unearthed. Make sure that the details of the spell itself remain preserved. It will need to be studied. Yeah, I'm still kind of working on my Princess Celestia voice, so if I change a few times, please be kind of lenient, because, yeah, I'm still new at this. The guard snapped into a sloop. Of course, Princess, we will gather any evidence at the scene and have it taken to the castle until such time it can be examined. Good, I have no doubt that the spell's purpose was dark, and I will not stand for my student being threatened, Celestia said, her eyebrows furrowing with determination. I want the truth of this, revealed Captain, with all haste. Of course, your majesty. Scene change equals equal equals for it. <laughs> And while you're thinking about it being scene change, I'm going to refill my glass. Might cut this out, might not. Who knows? Yeah, if you're wondering, I'm not drinking alcohol. I'm drinking red cool <sighs> So, yeah. Of course, you probably didn't think I was drinking alcohol. Don't know why anyone think that, but yes. I am drinking red Kool-Aid. With Splenda. Mm. Anywho, scene change. The unicorn guards search the area sweeping it with their magic to try and detect anything left behind. What remained of the wooden bowls were gathered and any bunt unburnt powder was collected together into a single bag. Everything and anything that was not natural to the ever free force was taken from the clearing, though the guards did not extend their search into bordering trees and bushes once it became clear the ritual's radius ended at the tree line. All that was gathered was loaded into a waiting chariot, and once the unicorns were finished, Pegasi hitched the chariot and took flight. Oh, and on the previous thing, uh, seeing how, like, all the ritual stuff was in center of the tree line they still should have checked the stuff on the outside because if you really want to hide something important and you were expecting them to not do that to not check the outside because they thought all of it was on the inside you would hide it there so possibility of random trap door or anything like that is quite possible but yes probably not uh Anyway, as I was just talking about how they gathered, load the chariot, and like the Pegasus pitch up and took flight. Anyways, they rose quickly into the sky before banking towards Canterlot as the unicorns below watched their fellow soldiers till they vanished beyond the treetops. 
All right, stallions, let go jo let's go join the group searching the force for any of the cult members that might have escaped. The lieutenant directing the clean up order. Give higher priority to any that appear to be unicorns. One of them used some kind of crazy magic to get away, and we don't want that to happen a second time. Sir, shouldn't some of us remain here? One of the soldiers spoke up. A newer recruit. A newer recruit to the Royal Guard. What for? The lieutenant snapped. That wasn't really snappy. What for? Wow. Yeah. Just imagine that as being snapped like BAM! Snapped. Glaring down the soldier that dared to question his order. To guard the crime scene, sir, the younger soldier replied, standing in staunch tension as the lieutenant walked right up to him. No, we've gathered everything of importance. The, yeah, I'm getting the feeling that there was something important that they didn't see, <laughs> because otherwise they wouldn't be having this whole debate. <laughs> oh, failure. But what if the cult has come back, sir? Listen close, because I'll say this only once. The lieutenant snapped, glaring down the overly vocal sir. soldier. I think it should be at the overly vocal soldier. Any criminal worth his salt will get as far away from the scene of his crime as possible. These ponies are crazy, but they're not stupid. They won't be coming back. And that's exactly why they will be coming back. <laughs> or perhaps they haven't even left cuz that's how I'm seeing it cuz seriously why leave the crime scene if he can just be like oh yeah vanish bye bye hide somewhere come back gather anything of importance that might be evidence and like would probably be used for a uh, the ritual, like any remains of Nightmare Moon or anything. But yeah. That's just my point of view. I may be talking insane talk here. Probably. I mean, I usually do. But anyways. The younger guard opened his mouth to speak. But the lieutenant continued on, ignoring him. Besides that. This isn't the central part in Canelot. Everfree is dangerous. There are monsters in here that could eat a pony twice my size in a single goal, armor and all. This isn't a place where we want to spend any more time than necessary. But if you want to stay here and guard the scene of the crime, be my guest. Just watch out for the Hydras. The veteran guard concluded, beginning to walk out of the clearing. The rest of the soldier follow, soldiers followed behind him, heading out into the forest to join the search. Only the guard who had spoken up did not move, remaining in the clearing as the others disappeared amongst the trees. He remained there for a minute, at best, before the lieutenant's words got to him. The soldier broke into a gallop as he left the clearing, sprinting to catch up with his comrades. <laughs> Such a brave soldier. Oh, there could be hydras or monsters all around. Don't worry. Oh, maybe standing here is the best idea. Right! Oh, yay! <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry if my talking is distracting you from the story. Truly apologize. Of course... If you're listening to this, you're kind of listening to it to hear me telling the story, so talking is kind of necessary. <laughs> uh, but I'll try and slow down with the sides and get back to the story. Uh, still, the magic that lingered in the air like a heavy mist began to shift sparkling in the cool night air as it was drawn to one side of the clearing. 
There, hidden away by a bush, a black sphere lay amongst the dirt, a sphere which was cast away from the center of the spell by Celestia's bolt of lightning. What did I tell you? It was just outside of the tree line, a black sphere. Probably pretty deadly and important or something like that. And the guards just were like, whatever, there couldn't have anything outside the line. And they're not going to come back or anything. That would be stupid. <laughs> but I guess that's kind of the point. The tiny black ball was nestled into a crook of the cold ground. From there, drew in the lingering magic, like a magnet attracting metal, pulled in the energy, and with each ounce it absorbed, it grew larger. Then, when the sphere had doubled its size, it pulsed. The pulse caused the tiny drops of blood to weep from pores in the sphere's surface. It was blood had been it was blood, had been harvested at the edge of the dagger only moments before, but now it was black and gooey. The life had been drained from the blood, and it was now being discarded like trash. Wow, that's kind of sad if you think about it, but... Yes! Uh, with each pulse, the sphere excreted more of the dead blood, which formed a smear on the ground. Then... When none of the used blood remained, Sphere's pulse shifted, became a wink, a weak but distinct pattern, a pitter patter that lived in the chest of almost every living creature, a heartbeat. All the while, the Sphere continued to grow larger, continued to draw in the magic of the clearing, and continued the process of be process began by the spell Celestia had interrupted. Dun dun dun! End of chat. Well, end of prelude. So I'll stop it here. Hopefully, it's still recording. Yes, it is. Cool. Okay, see you next time. Bye.